I'm Are you in? Yeah. Perfect. April 6th meeting of the CRA. <clears throat> I've got a few little formalities I need to read into the record. Pursuant to executive order number 20-69 issued by the office of Governor Ron DeSantis on March 20th, 2020, and my executive order number 20-5 the city of West Palm Beach may conduct meetings of their governing boards without having a quorum of its members present physically or at any specific location and utilizing communications media technology such as telephonic or video conferencing as provided by section 120.545B2 Florida statutes. Procedures for the public comment will be explained by the city attorney shortly. The members of the CRA board appearing remotely for this meeting are Christina Lambert, Commissioner, uh, Christina, uh, President of the Commission, Commissioner Corey Nearing, Commissioner Joe Paduzzi, Commissioner Richard Riles, and Commissioner Kelly Schof. Uh, Madam City Attorney, uh, please state the procedures to be followed during this meeting. Okay, as indicated by the mayor, the executive order issued by him 2005 suspended the rules relating to public meetings found in the city's charter and section 2-31 of the West Palm Beach City Code of Ordinances. Since this is a virtual meeting as authorized by the governor of the state of Florida and the mayor's executive order, members of the public wishing to address the body may also do so virtually by following one of the three following methods. First, you can provide public comment through a dedicated <coughs> City of West Palm Beach public comment voicemail by calling 561-320-2679. Again, 561-320-2679. There you'll be able to leave a voice message. It will be limited to three minutes, the same as your uh, rules currently provide for. Additionally, you can leave a three minute video uh, during the virtual commission meeting. The video um, site is public comment at wpb.org. Again, your video will be limited to three minutes. And finally, you can submit comments with an online city comment form. The website for that is www.wpb.org backslash public comments. You may use any one of those three methods to submit comments. There have been comments already submitted for this meeting and the clerk has those comments. The commissioners have been given access to the comments for their consideration prior to the meeting today. The notice as to how to get to public comments for our virtual meeting have been published on the city's website and have been entered in press releases. The comments submitted are distributed to the Board of Commissioners throughout the day so they can consider them. And additionally, the online comment forms will close uh, just prior to the meeting. All comments submitted will be included as part of the public record for this virtual meeting and will be considered by the city commission prior to any action being taken. Mayor. Uh, thank you, Madam City Attorney. Now, you had mentioned that pop, uh, comments had already been submitted. I, I have not received anything. Did any hey, other... so do you have public comments for any of the um, CRA meeting? You're on mute, you're on mute. I just unmuted. Yes, I have one for the CRA meeting. Okay. All right. Well, um, is it for an agenda item or for non-agenda item? Um, it's for an agenda item. Regardless okay. Of All right. Hazel, can you go ahead and read that comment? 
You want to read into the record now? Yes, please. It's from Raphael Clemente. Dear CRA board members, if at all possible. Wow, this is really. Let's see if I move back. Mayor, can you mute yourself? Um, oh. I'm going to have uh, the TV producer turn on the speakers and change. Try it again. This is from Rafael Clemente. Dear CRA board members, if at all possible, please consider starting the next phase of the streetscape as soon as possible so as to capitalize on the period of disruption caused by COVID-19. In speaking with other downtown district CEOs and staff recently, those with infrastructure and public space beautification projects are fast tracking them now. All are taking precautions to ensure that health and safety rules are being adhered to. Thank you for your consideration. As regards, Raphael Clemente, Executive Director, Downtown Development Authority. Thank you. Okay, we will proceed with the meeting. Uh, Madam Clerk, uh, although we don't normally do this, but why don't we uh, have a roll call, please? Okay. Mayor, Mayor Keith James. Here. President Christina Lambert. Here. Commissioner Kelly Schoff. Present. Commissioner Corey Nearing. Here. Commissioner Richard Riles. At the record show, Commissioner Riles did not respond. Commissioner Joseph Paduzzi. Here. Interim CRE Executive Director Allison Justice. Here. City Attorney Kimberly Rothenberg. Here. That means your roll call, Mr. Mayor. You're mute. Thank you very much. Okay, we'll proceed with the meeting. Um, Madam Clerk, are there any comments from the public for any non-agenda items? Um, that's the only comment I have for CRA. Okay, uh, comments from the board. Madam President? No comments at this time, Mayor. Well, uh, I guess I did just want to make sure we were going to have an update from administration on the CRA director search. Yes, we will get to that. Okay, great. Uh, Commissioner Nearing. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Just a, a quick, um, I guess a comment and maybe a question if there was ever a time uh, that our corner store on 7th and Tamron would be considered a essential uh, service, it would be now. Um, Ms. Justice, any, I, I understand it's not the priority, uh, but any updates on, that store is probably not opening anytime soon now at this point, right? My understanding is that they are fully permitted and ready to open. They've been stocking their shelves. I don't know um, if they planned on opening uh, during this time. So I'll, I'll get an update from the project manager on whether they're going to open or not. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. That's all I have. Um, to your point, Madam President, uh, the city will get the update on the search toward the end of the meeting because the city administrator is getting set up with their technology, but we'll get that to you. Um, any other comments, uh, Commissioner Nearing? Okay, uh, Commissioner Paduzzi. Thank you, briefly, Mayor. I just wanted to say that my background is being provided um, it's called Peaceful Time, and it's by Connie Wagner. Um, Ms. Wagner was one of the winners of last year's photography contest for the Grassy Waters Conservancy. And I thought it was a beautiful picture, and I wanted to share it with the world. That's all I have Thank, thank you for doing that. Um, lovely. Uh, Commissioner Shove. Thank you, Mayor. I, I, too, thought I'd take advantage of the technology that we have and find myself standing in what I hope to one, be, one day be the anchor site. So behind me is the graphic of the um, developer concept that hopefully we will be approving soon. So I thought I might take the opportunity to um, ask Ms. Justice if there was an update on the anchor site. 
Uh, the acre site term sheet has been signed and it's approved by the CRA advisory board. It will be coming in front of the CRA board um, on the 20th due to the lateness of the CRA advisory board meeting. It did not make this agenda. However, the city attorney is working, uh, moving forward on drafting and working on the development agreement at that same time. And so, Ms. Justice, if you have any idea from the time where we have a signed term sheet to development agreement, any idea what the time frame is between those two approved term sheet to development agreement? I do not. I will get you an answer on that. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, that's all the comment. Uh, board members, I will remind you the protocol we established uh, during our dry run. If you want to make a comment, um, just send me a, a, a chat a message and I will recognize you. Okay, uh, we do have one item for consent, uh, minutes of the special community uh, development, redevelopment agency meeting of February 26, 2020. Um, any comments, any questions? Hearing none, I will entertain a motion for approval. Mayor, move to approve. Is there a second? Second. Uh, it's been moved and seconded. And again, as we discussed, we'll do a roll call uh, for the actual votes. President You're on mute, Miss 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 Carson. Still on mute. President Lambert. In favor. Commissioner Neary. Yay. Commissioner Schultz. Yay. Commissioner Peduzzi. Yay. Mayor James. Yes. I end your roll call, Mr. Mayor. Uh, motion carries unanimously. 5-0. Okay. Thank you. All right. Now, uh, resolution item number three. Resolution number 20-21, approving a grant in an amount not to exceed $75,000 to Philip Dozier, pursuant to the CRA's Contributing Structure Rehabilitation Grant Program. Uh, Ms. Justice? Yes. Um, for the purpose of our first uh, virtual meeting, I'm going to be giving all of the presentations uh, this afternoon. I believe I can share my screen here. Um, and I'm going to start this presentation. Uh, this is a, a, a grant request. Uh, it is by Habitat for Humanity, but it's uh, for Philip Dozier. It is a single family home in the historic Northwest. It's for a, a contributing structure rehabilitation grant that this agency offers. Uh, a little bit about the grant program. It provides funding up to 80% of the project cost. Uh, not to exceed $75,000, and that can include exterior and interior improvements on historically contributing buildings. Uh, the project scope here will include new windows, doors, siding, I need to minimize you, <laughs> uh, new bath fixtures, upgrade of electrical systems, um, and painting on the outside. This again is in partnership with Habitat for Humanity and the agency will fund up to $75,000 for rehabilitation and critical repair costs. Uh, this is the subject home uh, at about approximately 5th and Douglas. You can see where it lies within the historic Northwest. Uh, it is also directly across the street from some, some new habitat homes that they constructed with uh, CRA lots that were donated. Uh, this is a, a photo of the current structure uh, another another picture um, of the current structure. And here's some of the much needed repairs that are on the interior. Um, they've got structural issues on the ceiling, obviously roof need need of roof repair um, and other other major repairs within this house. Uh, just uh, so the commission can see, these are the habitat homes uh, across the street from from this property uh, that were completed again on the CRA lots. Uh, Habitat for Humanity also does, has a couple of programs. One is a critical repair. Uh, they also have a brush with kindness where they paint. Uh, we've partnered with them uh, for homes within the historic Northwest uh, previously on their uh, programs. 
Uh, and again, the request is for contributing structure upgrade. The total project cost is $93,753. Uh, the contribute structure grant is 80% of the project value. Uh, therefore, a funding request of $74,712. If you have any questions. Um, I don't have any uh, comment requests, so hearing none, I will entertain a motion. Mayor, I'll move to approve resolution number 20-21. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, can you do a roll call, please? Mayor James. Uh, fav in favor, yes. Mr. Lambert? Yay. Mr. Schultz? Yay. Mr. Neary? Yay. Mr. Peduzzi? Yay. Any roll call, Mr. Mayor? Thank you. Motion carries uh, unanimously. And um, thank you all very much. On to the next item. Four, item four, resolution number 20-23, authorizing development incentives for CHS, CAPC, JV1, LLC's Arts on Broadway project pursuant to the CRA's Real Estate Development Accelerator, Vita. A grant program. Ms. Justice. All right, I'm going to share once again. Uh, so uh, this board sitting as a city commission has seen the Arts on Broadway project. So just a little bit of background on where this project is and what they're requesting, uh, what they've received from the city and what they're requesting from the CRA. Uh, this is a, a project that's located uh, between 27th and 28th Street along Broadway. Um, if you can see the ownership pattern, the city of West Palm Beach owns uh, five of the lots. Uh, the, the developer owns two of the lots that they, that they purchased. Uh, the following is the project team and partners, including the city of West Palm Beach. Uh, the city of West Palm Beach had agreed to donate the land, five lots uh, that were appraised at $228,500. Uh, $228, um, also approved a $300,000 loan with a 3% interest rate and a 10 year term that was approved on 1118, uh, resolution number 350-19. Uh, also uh, a part of the development agreement with the city is estimated fee waivers and reductions valued at approximately twenty-five dollars to $35,000. Uh, they're also partnering with PNC, who is a, not just a debt, but also an opportunity zone equity financing, uh, New Jersey Community Capital, JP Morgan Chase, uh, their engineers are GAI consultants, and Stephen Bender is the, the architect on this project. Uh, this project is in uh, for, for permitting, so they're expecting to to begin construction soon on this. Uh, the project is housing, a uh, mix of studio, one and two bedroom units. Uh, and, and as part of the agreement, 26 units will be 80% uh, American, or I'm sorry, area median income and 120% area median income. So they will be workforce housing. Uh, they will also set aside units for those engaged in the arts. Uh, the ZBA variances were approved on April 4th. Uh, this is a rendering of the project. Again, this is a uh, container unit project. This is another view. And then this is an example of how they put the containers together. And this is one of their two, two bedroom models. Uh, so this is, I believe, three different, three containers that are put together for the two bedroom models. Uh, project costs, 
just over hard construction of just over six million dollars. Uh, current assessed value with all with the properties is uh, ninety one thousand five forty seven. Uh, construction costs are estimated to be around six point two million dollars, and then a future assessment, which is how we base the RITA grant, uh, is estimated at, at four million one hundred sixty eight thousand uh, dollars. This just gives this just shows you a breakdown of their um, their capital stack, so their sources of funding. Again, they have an opportunity zone. Uh, this is in an opportunity zone. Uh, they have the note from West Palm Beach, the loan, uh, the deferred developer fee on this, uh, which the developer will be deferring any, any uh, profits on this, and then the additional subsidy. So uh, total project cost is just over $9.2 million. Uh, the, the RITA grant is performance-based tax incentive <clears throat> program, and it, allow, it allows for incentives over for projects over five million dollars um we've utilized this in the past we just recently approved um, some funding for a neo kazakov's project uh, you can use it for land markdown development cost relocation assistance demo infrastructure assembly so what this is based on is a reimbursement so uh, reimbursement of 50 percent of the tiff for five years not to exceed one hundred sixty thousand dollars so this project, uh, once it's complete, the first year they pay taxes, uh, this agency would reimburse 50% of those taxes for the next five years. Um, depending on the value of the property, if they're over in five years or if it's, uh, the value is higher, you could get to the 160,000 uh, in less than five years. Uh, again, the, just the agreement, uh, the development agreement that we put together, uh, they're hoping to be uh, leased and occupied by June 30th, 2021. Obviously, that could be subject to delays, um, obviously, any force majeure event. Um, TIF disbursements would begin uh, after the first taxing year. Um, so, so, so not necessarily, obviously, it, it's, a, it's a year lag before we receive the taxes and before they would get repaid. And if the developer fails uh, or defaults, the CRA has a right to terminate the, the lease or the development agreement immediately. Uh, that is my presentation on Arts and Broadway. I know that we had some of the team members were going to be on the call. I'm not sure. I don't see anybody else here, so I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure how that if they're if they're on the call or not or made it on the call. Okay, very good. I do have a uh, couple of the board members who have questions. Uh, Commissioner Nearing, uh, you indicated you had a question. I did. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Justice, for your presentation. I couldn't find this in the backup. The uh, AMI restriction, is that in perpetuity? Is that for 15 years? Um, I, you know, I, I believe it's pr typically the city does it on 15 years. I need to, I do have the agreement from the city and I apologize. I don't, I don't have that information for you. Typically the, the how HCD um, is, it is 15 years is the minimum. So is there any way, uh, cause that would, I, I would definitely have a, a, some input, but it, I, I could live with 15, but if it were, you know, 10 or eight, that would probably change yeah. what I'm thinking about this. So yeah, and our, apart? our agreement doesn't, you know, is, is, is separate and apart. The gotcha. city agreements already been made, gotcha. um, but okay. that was my question there. Thanks. Okay. Very good. Uh, Commissioner show. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I first want to say that this this item was presented to the CRA Advisory Board and was approved unanimously. Um, I know a lot of us as board members have looked at this project before, and I think it's keenly important for the Broadway corridor. So, as the District One Commissioner, um, you know, I want to point out that this potentially will be the first new building on Broadway in a little over 20 years. Uh, the last one being the fire station, which was a, a city-owned building, and, and is is a city-owned building. Um, so I think it's really important that we we try to partner and drive the private sector here because that's really what's going to help contribute to the revitalization of the, the Broadway corridor. Um, to Commissioner Nearing's point, 
um, I think it is really important that we look at the um, affordable housing aspects of this project. And I think it brings what, in, in my opinion, will be a, um, a first of its kind project um, and will potentially bring a lot more uh, attention, not only to the Broadway corridor, but to West Palm Beach in general. So food for thought. Yep. Very good. And, and we did get confirmation that it is 15 years that the city's affordable housing restriction. Okay, very good. Uh, I don't have any other requests for comments, so I will entertain a motion. Mayor, I move to approve resolution 20-23. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Madam uh, Clerk, will you call roll, please? Mayor James. Yay. Commissioner. Yay. Commissioner Show. Yay. Commissioner Nearing. Yay. Commissioner Paduzzi. Yay. Raise your roll call, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. Uh, motion carries unanimously. Thank you. On to item five, resolution number 20-25, approving the fourth amendment to the project funding agreement for the, for the Clematis Streetscape and alleyway project between the city and the West Palm Beach CRA for funding of the 400 to 600 blocks. Ms. Justice. All right. So, uh, Mayor Commissioners, you will have uh, you have companion items on the City Commission for the GMP, as well as the funding agreement, uh, which is a companion item to the CRA. Again, this is for the four, five, and six hundred blocks of Clamata Street Phase Three, which is the final phase of Clamata Street construction. Uh, the CRA resolution in front of you is 20-25, and the, again, there'll be 98-20 and 99-20 will be the companion city resolutions. Project limits between the 400 and 600 blocks of Clamata Street, and the guaranteed maximum price for the project is $7,966,826.35. Uh, uh, $826 um, I'll talk a little bit more about about what's involved in that, that GMP um, moving forward. Uh, just to show you again, the, the, the project limits, uh, the four and 500 blocks are complete reconstructions. The 600 block will have some, some aesthetic improvements, uh, including some shade trees, and we're gonna mill, mill and resurface uh, the roadway uh, and, and lighting as well. Uh, just a little bit on the public outreach and stakeholder coordination. Uh, Dover Cole, as they were designing this, held one-on-one -on -one stakeholder meetings with the property and business owners on the four and 500 blocks. Uh, we've had a downtown merchant meeting, uh, as well as a public input meeting, and then had an additional uh, meeting with just the 400 and 500 block merchants, as well as updating them monthly and discussing uh, the construction and how we're going to move forward with this project. It went in front of DAC on February 12th, and then uh, face of the city approval was March 9th. Uh, here's just some, some visuals uh, that you saw at the face of the city presentation. This is the intersection of Quadrille. Um, here's a visual along the 400 block of Clamata Street. Again, it's the same design with the curbless streets, retractable bollards, additional shade trees. Um, to talk a little bit about the, the timeline, because this project was scheduled to begin in May after Sunfest, um, and due to COVID-19 and the businesses being impacted and shut down, we have started discussing with the merchants the possibility of moving up the project timeline. Uh, you know, a majority of the merchants are in favor of moving up this timeline. However, they are concerned, um, rightly so, about how long the project is going to take. Uh, typically, the complete rebuild will take four, between four and five months. Uh, we have worked with Burkhart Construction to provide some contingency for um, additional night and weekend hours, if available. Uh, they have been working most Saturdays on the previous projects, but they can, if they can get their subs to work Sundays and increase those 
those working hours in order to reduce the schedule of the project. That is, that is the goal. Um, they are going to, if approved, they will be shutting down Comata Street, the 500 block tomorrow, uh, April 7th. Uh, the, the normal timeline would have the 500 block complete by August of 2020. But again, we put some provisions in the, um, in the guaranteed maximum price to ex expedite and overtime work to reduce project schedules. Uh, they will soon follow instead of waiting on the 400 block, they will probably two weeks from now begin on 400 block demolition and um, come in right behind. Uh, the, only, the only part we're unsure because uh, Quadrille is a DOT intersection, so we have not received all the DOT approvals. We'll have to coordinate that intersection um, as well as for the project schedule. And we're also working very closely with the Banyan project schedule to coordinate all of the maintenance of traffic and um, entrances to parking garages and businesses um, for both of the projects as they move forward. Uh, so we're, what we're asking on the CRA is to approve, approve resolution 2025, authorizing the funding interlocal between the city and the West Palm Beach CRA. Uh, thank you, Ms. Justice. On, on that last point, I would just ask that, uh, and you alluded to it, but I just want to mention it for emphasis, that there be coordination uh, with uh, the Banyan Street projects. And uh, let, let's just make sure that you know we're, we're not jammed up there. No yeah, and intended. we did have a we did have a meeting with both contractors um, today. Um, and we're going to have weekly coordination meetings with the two contractors together to make sure that, that uh, we're moving forward appropriately. Very good. Very good. Okay, I do have a couple of the board members with questions. Uh, first, uh, Commissioner Shove. Thank you, Mayor, and, and thank you, Ms. Justice, for your presentation. Um, I know I've received um, several emails of feedback, mainly from the merchants that are affected on the 500 block. And I understand their their concerns on the time frame. Um, two questions for you. One, um, how confident are we that we can we can complete in this time frame? I understand there are contingencies. We have contingencies upon contingencies, uh, trying to make sure that we accommodate one. And two, do we have a plan to communicate while construction is going on with the merchants along uh, that corridor to make sure that as things change and progress, hopefully go more quickly than we anticipated that we can let them know the progress that we're making so that they can, um, you know, be aware of what's happening and adjust accordingly. Um, on the second question, we uh, usually we attend the CRA attends the, the monthly merchant meetings with um, the merchant association. Um, in the past, we've, we've had those held those meetings more frequently if they needed additional updates. So I, um, I will make sure we coordinate and, and um, if we need to to increase the frequency of those meetings to keep them updated, we will do that. Um, you know, as much as we would obviously love to give a certainty on completion, obviously we can't do that. I can give a certainty on the, you know, typically on the five months, but unfortunately we're in a very uncertain time right now. Um, and, you know, luckily the, the contractor has been, uh, has been, very uh, good at working with us and has uh, said they will do what they can to speed up the schedule. Yeah. Mayor, if I might follow up. Yes. And thank you for that too, Ms. Justice. I mean, I understand that you only know what you know in construction. Um, do we have a plan in place? Because I think right now it's, it's a good opportunity to take advantage of, of our traffic being low as well as potentially provide jobs um, for a lot of people who are currently out of jobs? Do we have a contingency plan that says we could hire X more people to increase the, the labor pool? You know, something that might, might benefit both our workers, the project and construction. I would, I would assume that part of their plan is to hire more as their subs as far as what we've placed in contingency for this. Um, I can get you details on what their, what their exact plan is um, to hire additional labor for these uh, for these projects, both with Banyan and with Comatis, I think they they plan on having a couple a more crews on site than they would normally have. Thank you. 
Okay, uh, Madam President, you had a question. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Ms. Justice. Appreciate the presentation and for making sure that we're staying in communication with the merchants. My line of questioning is along the same um, lines as Commissioner Schoff, and I think I heard you say that we can get more specifics from Burkhart Construction because I I understand what you're saying that we can't you know we don't we don't know what the issues are going to be that we might be facing but we can look at what are the what are the action steps that we're taking to make sure that we're doing all we can to complete as early as possible um, and I appreciate that contingencies were put in and we have a budget for that. Can you speak specifically about how much is that contingency? Is it similar to the same contingency fund that we did for the other sections or is it more now? Um, I think that was all of my questions. Thank you. Um, I do have, I did see that Adam from Burkhart is on the line and I think that they're bringing him into the conversation so he can, add, he can maybe address some some specific questions you may have as far as the construction. I've allowed him to speak. He just needs to unmute himself. Adam, you there? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hi. Yes. Um, thank you for having us. I'm glad I was able to log on. <laughs> um, the yes. Yeah, so the um, the simple answer is we we actually included a little bit more contingency this year for overtime and premium working hours um, to help expedite, uh, just like uh, Allison has discussed about working Saturdays and Sundays. Um, it is our intent to have a hard surface on the entire project uh, by Labor Day. Um, so we may be landscaping and that kind of stuff, but it is our intent um, to get that done. Um, I know everyone would love to hear a, a guarantee as far as being out of a certain area, but with underground utilities, there's unknowns. And that's the only reason why we kind of hesitate on some of those items. Um, because once we start digging up, um, as long as everything that we find is, you know, per plan and all that kind of stuff, um, you know, we don't see any issues. Um, but yes, we did make a contingency for uh, those items, if that makes sense. Thank you, Adam. I appreciate uh, your being available to address those uh, issues. Uh, Madam President, did you have any follow-up to, to that? Did follow Adam, did, yes, thank you. Adam, did you say Labor Day? So is that September, the beginning of September? Yes, I think I'm still on mute. Yes, sorry. Am I still unmuted? I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're, you're fine, we hear you, yeah. we hear you. Um, Wasn't that yes. the original date that we were looking to complete this? So is that expedited or not? The, the original date is usually between, it was four and five months. So the original date was usually like middle to late October for the two blocks. And now that we've moved up, we've moved up a month and then we've also moved it up another month is our intent. So by starting a month earlier, we were a month and then with premium and overtime, we're hoping to beat it by another month is what our intent is. So hoping to meet the September, early September by a month. So you're saying yes. early August. Okay, uh, Commissioner Peduzzi, you had some questions? It may have been answered. It was along the same lines. I thought I saw a previous slide that it said a November, December completion date, but that may have been before moving it up. Uh, was I mistaken that a slide said November, December? Yeah, the original um, project schedule would have been from May to December uh, for the two blocks. Um, Okay. The, I, I will tell you the 600 block, because it is some, um, they're along the sides, we don't have a lot of road work to do. We're going to hold that off until the end to see, you know, see what the timing is for the four and 500 blocks to get them back open mm -hmm. and the business people at those businesses. Um, but yes, the original schedule would have been November, December. We're hoping to push that up a couple months now. Okay. That would be great because it, that's a long time. And obviously we're all interested in seeing this thing get completed as quickly as possible. Thank you. Okay, um, Armando was on the phone now, so maybe he has some, some insight into this. Armando, can you hear us? Yes, hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, yeah, I just wanted to clarify on the, uh, on the date of, uh, the potential date of completion near Labor Day, because I, I believe that's 
looking at both the four and 500 blocks. So if we're starting on the 500 block, I'd just like to ask Alan if that would then be done earlier than, you know, not discounting the 400 block. When could the 500 block be done, assuming that the, uh, right, there's no underground utility issues that, that weren't expected? Adam, uh, I think that was a question for you. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm sorry. Yeah, we're going to do everything we can to expedite. Um, I mean, it's, um, it's six months for both blocks and we're going to have two crews out there basically the whole time, um, doing everything. Um, so, you know, that's where we'll be. I think, you know, with the Labor Day date puts us right there at the, the, uh, the five months mark from now anyway. So. Okay. But Adam. I think that this question was specifically on the 500 block on, on the last phase, we did the 200 block and completed it first. Yes. I'm sorry. So, yes. It'll be done earlier. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, Commissioner Nearing, you, you had a uh, question comment. Yeah. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, well, first of all, I, I, you know, totally agree with uh, uh, Mr. Clemente's Raphael's uh, public comment in terms of, of getting it done. Um, and not waiting. Also, I think like all the other commissioners, uh, the goal here is to, to have a, a great project and one that is done in a way that uh, is expedited as much as possible. But when I go back to the genesis of this project, the, the plan was always to do it, um, although it's a fluid process and that we there were lessons learned and, and we talk about changes, it was always to, to get this thing done and get it done in cycles and not wait two or three cycles or take cycles off. And so I, I, I'm definitely committed and supportive of moving this forward. Um, and again, this is something we've been talking about for a long time, but I think at least a minimum of three or four years in terms of the process and how it would lay out. And so I'm excited that we're, we're close to the finish line, but empathetic and understanding of all the emails that I received from the business community in terms of the timing. And I think Adam, as you have from the very first time uh, that that this, this uh, was initiated, it's always been about how do we expedite this? How do we get our businesses back in play as soon as possible? So nothing has changed. Uh, the pressure is still on and uh, the, the commission and I as one commissioner still support the entire project, but also understanding that it's, it's how do we get our businesses back online as soon as possible. And I think that the fact that uh, Burkhardt has been involved with this project from the very beginning and they've done two phases of it, they understand the sensitivities to the business community and to the merchants. And, and I have the utmost confidence that they will do everything within their power to get it done. Uh, Commissioner Shelf, you had another question. Thank you, Mayor. Mine was, was similar to the timeline. And I think if I just uh, summarize what my feelings are, it's that we prioritize the businesses. I think you know the, those comments have been heard here. When we're looking at the, the four, five and 600 block, on the 400 block, one side of that is City Hall. On the 600 block, one side of that is the police station. And so if we could prioritize as we go to try to make sure that the, the blocks and the sides of the streets that, that are most affected by businesses are put back in order first, you know, I think that's really the goal. I'm, I'm definitely supportive of moving forward and completing Clamata Street. Absolutely. Okay. Go ahead, Adam. I'm sorry. I just wanted to say absolutely. I, that is our intent as well. We have no desire to... Uh, to be out there any longer than we need to be, so. Very good, Madam President, you had a follow up? Yes, thank you, Mayor. And Ms. Justice, I know you always do a good job of this, um, but just wanted to be on the record that if we could get updates on this as well, so that if something happens unforeseen and, and you know we notice that there's gonna be some delays and, and it looks like possibly we could use some more budget dollars for this that you keep us updated. Yes, of course. Thank you. Okay, very good. Um, I don't see any other comments, uh, requests, so I will entertain a motion. Mayor, I have a public comment on this item. Motion to approve resolution number 20-25. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Sorry, Mr. Mayor, my mute is still on, but I have a public comment on this item. Oh, we do, okay. Well, um, yes. we I'm sorry, it's from Jonathan Burgess, and it just says I support this request. Okay. 
Okay, very good. Any other, that's the only card? Yes. Okay, uh, roll call, please. Mayor James? Yay. Commissioner Lambert? Yay. Commissioner Schultz? Yay. Commissioner Nearing? Yay. Commissioner Perduzzi? Yay. And is the roll call, Mr. Mayor? Very good. Motion uh, carries unanimously. Thank you all very much. And then uh, last item on the agenda will be an update on the search for executive uh, director. Uh, Ms. Johnson. Good afternoon, members of the board. At the end of February, the board uh, selected the top two candidates uh, for the CRA executive director and gave direction for me to begin negotiations with the top candidate in, in the event that uh, that fell through to proceed with negotiations with the second candidate. Uh, midway through the negotiations, Mr. Moss uh, informed me that he was formally withdrawing from consideration and in turn I informed the board and began negotiations with your second uh, choice candidate, uh, Kristen Mori. Uh, midway be between those negotiations, uh, it became apparent that they were not going to materialize into an agreement and I have informed the board of that individually. Subsequent to that, I had the HR director to outline the options that the board has for consideration of moving forward with an executive director recruitment. Uh, that was forwarded to the board by email. And for the record, I will put those three options in the record. Uh, one option would be to conduct a new recruitment under the same or a different process at the board's choosing. The second option would be to identify if there is a qualified internal employee that the board would like to appoint to the position. And then the third option would be for the board to select one of the other three candidates from the initial search uh, as the executive director. Uh, I would ask that the board allow for some time to give a thoughtful evaluation of your three options. I can come back and talk to you all at an appropriate time and see what is the pleasure of the board. Thank you, uh, Ms. Johnson. I would simply say that we probably uh, put this on the agenda for an upcoming meeting uh, so that we can have the benefit of everyone uh, else's opinion in a open discussion on uh, a path moving forward. Um, I don't see any Questions, remarks, concerns, comments uh, for Ms. Johnson. So now that we have heard that update, uh, that's the last item on the agenda. Um, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved. Uh, it's been moved and Thank seconded. Madam Clerk, roll call on adjournment motion. You're on mute. <laughs> Mayor James? Yes. Commissioner Lambert? Yay. Commissioner Show? Yay. Commissioner Nearing? Yay. Commissioner Peduzzi? Yay. It's a roll call, Mr. Mayor. Very good. Thank you all very much. And uh, we will reconvene as a city commission at 5 p.m. Uh, let me just say that this was a very smooth rollout of our new technology. So thank you all very much. Thank, thank you. you.